Okay, we'll start off with the visit to the corner tank. And uh, plants have been moved around a little bit. Still growing very nicely. And uh, the cabamba over on the left hand side has been transplanted mainly from the bow tank and is starting to uh, recover. Used to overgrow in this tank, hadn't for a long time. <laughs> the only new fish in here. We were, uh, we did a deal with the Hidden Reef the other day. Our pleco from the bow tank had gotten so big it was chasing the neons and my wife caught it catching and eating some of the neons. So we were down about four neons out of a dozen. We finally said, well, he's got to go. Either he gets flushed down or we deliver him to a new home. And so, of course, we delivered him to a new home. And uh, contrary to earlier, they weren't doing a, uh, a credit if you donate a fish like that that they would sell. So instead, we just donated them. But we get, ended up buying six fish in the meanwhile. And so I don't know if you're going to be able to see them or not. But back here in the center are three young... Let's see if I can find them in the viewfinder here. Oh, there is one of them. Right behind that rotella plant. Sure, he's right dead center behind it is one of three young, oh there's the other one, three young pearl garamis that are going to replace the big ones that we've lost over time. And they're, uh, they're beautiful fish, uh, much smaller once we put them in our tanks versus what we thought we were buying at the time. But nevertheless, and then uh, what you also have here is one of the mothers, there, there she is, this, this mother swordtail just got moved back into this tank today after being moved from the office tank and uh, into what is now a maternity ward. So that split betta tank, we lost both bettas over time and uh, took it down, completely flushed everything out, cleaned out the gravel, put it back together and I had two females, including that sword tail, uh, that looked very pregnant and we'd never see the baby survive in these big tanks. So we moved her from the office tank into the right side of that better tank, and I'll show you that shortly. And there we counted uh, the other day, Pam spotted 16 babies in just one day. And on the other side is the pineapple sword, and you see the male here. This, this will be the father nice looking fish and uh, so his mate is over in the other side of that tank and uh, there's a couple of babies floating around in there but uh, not a full load yet so I keep her there a little bit longer and I did finally catch one of the black molly female black mollies that looked like she was very pregnant and put her in the right hand side so we'll show you those in just a minute but meanwhile uh, this community tank certainly has a nice community in it. And even after trimming that rotella, I think that's what it's called, rotella is the, that plant that I keep telling you I was so disappointed when we first got the cuttings of that for like $8, about seven little cuttings. And now this plant is as big as the one that they, was the mother plant at Disc Madness. And so I'm very pleased with how that grows out and it's filled up both tanks and my wife has just worked on the other tank and thinned out everything. So you'll see uh, it, it was overtaking in that last video, the front of that bow tank. And now it's in the background and starting all over again. And so you see it here to the right and you see another growth starting up here, right where that red tail shark is. All the tanks have red tail sharks in them now. I'm sorry, no it doesn't. The, the office tank doesn't have a red tail shark, but the other tanks have two red tail sharks, as you can see here. And they are getting nice and big, which means their coloration is just gorgeous. Love those red tail sharks. Whoops! So much for seeing that one, huh? And then we also got uh, a couple young cream sickle mollies. We had uh, three 
larger ones, one died. And so I got three more young ones, put them in this tank. So now we have five in here. And you see the big one right in the front there and the other is swimming around it. And again, the guppies are just our homebred guppies here, the split tail ones and the red tail ones. And they seem to be doing quite well. And so uh, there's some, what kind of uh, tetras in here? There's a three very nice Pretty, um, I forget what kind of tetras they are. There's one over in the right hand side. Very pretty. If you'll turn sideways, you'll see what I mean. And one of them is like the bully, he chases the other two all the time. So, but they are very pretty with those little fins, as you'll see in the Pristilla tetras. The Madagascar lace plant, that's a poor example of a leaf there is still just hanging in there and the tricolored shark you see in the front and what's left of our neon tetras that were really decimated over many months with some type of fungal disease one of them still shows it and so we haven't mixed them at all didn't want to pass that disease along let me take you over to now what is the maternity tank Now this is going to be really tough because I don't know if you're going to be able to see the babies or not, but this right hand side has, uh, as Pam counted them, 16 babies just born yesterday. So they're kind of small, but they're all right down there against the white gravel. You see a couple of them against the background. And there's a uh, pregnant female black molly up in the plants here, which are giving protection to the babies and also giving her some place where she can feel comfortable. And then on the left hand side, we've got a very skittish pineapple sword tail in the background there. You can see it behind the banana plant. And if I do anything, she'll come charging out. But again, there's babies in here too. They're the first couple of her babies. And uh, I don't know if you'll see those babies in there, but we've got five or six of them. And uh, as you may see her gravid spot there, it's still pretty dark. So I'm assuming she's not fully dropped her babies yet. And the amazing thing is that divider has tiny holes in it. And the holes are such that the babies can find their way over to the other side of this interesting but there's no bedders in here now it's just uh, going to be a maternity tank and once the mothers drop their babies I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. let's just leave the babies in here till they get a little bit bigger and then eventually put them in the office tank where most of the babies seem to survive now here over in the bow tank Pam has just some done some work in the last day uh, cleaning it out and trimming those leaves and moving them around like I said before she's the gardener I'm the jungle person and so uh, I'm sure if she had her way, maybe some of these plants wouldn't even be in here because there's so many. But she does a beautiful job of just laying them out, just like she does with her outdoor gardens. And uh, it really looks pretty. The fish certainly seem to like her work. And as I'll show you, the three clown plecos that we picked up at Hidden Reef the other day. And the fish catcher manager of the fish department there it was very generous. He uh, knew we had just donated that big pleco, and he knew they don't give credit anymore, but he did discount uh, these clown plecos uh, by a dollar each. And so uh, I think they were $5.99, and then with a dollar off, it was $4.99. So we got three of them. They're, they're guaranteed not to grow up real big, and you'll see them up close in just a minute. Now here's that clown pleco I was telling you about. One of them just happened to be out in front. And uh, you can see the size relative to that red-tailed shark. So it's probably about an inch and a half or so. We'll see a better shot of them a little bit later. But we're very pleased. And looking at photos on the internet, it's going to grow up to be about five or six inches and really be very colorful. So never seen these before. 
I'm very pleased to have Pam discovered them and uh, couldn't resist getting all three. So, enjoy. Here's an even better shot of that clown pleco. It came out nice sitting on the leaf as it is. So let's see if we can get a good shot for you. And so I would say that's about maybe two inches, inch and a half, two inches, and they say it gets up to about five or six. So it won't overpower this tank. And hidden behind that is a orange bristlenose pleco that uh, is behind the leaf there. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it or not. No, nope, I don't think so. But that gives you a better shot of what will be a very colorful, especially as it grows older, uh, fish. We're quite excited about that. It was an interesting find that Pam spotted in the tanks, and I've never heard or seen them before. And so it was uh, made for a very successful fishing trip. And you can see him working on that leaf. Where is he? There he is. And that's what they're supposed to be really good for cleaning up the algae. So we shall see. The other thing you see here is that school of tetras, the Pristilla tetras. Got about a dozen of them there and they're doing very well. They tend to school together and stay pretty much in that corner. And some of our young baby sword tails. But the plants are really doing very well as they always do here. And last time you saw the kabamba, it was up to the top. Notice how she's replanted that behind these angelfish. And so we'll see how that develops. And then cleaned out quite a bit of the Amazon sword in the back there. There's a denison barb. They look so beautiful just coming across. I don't know where the third one went. But they seem to just follow each other back and forth. Meanwhile, the angels, as soon as they bring a camera out, they come right to the front of the tank and just sit there waiting to be photographed. And uh, they're doing very well. Love especially that black one. And the bluish gray one. Uh, it doesn't look that healthy, but it is healthy. It's just the coloration. And uh, here comes one of those red-tailed sharks that I was telling you about. What's also neat here is the schooling effect uh, we get with those denison barbs that you see off to the right here. They tend to follow each other in a line almost. And I've, as I've said before, I always loved those fish, never thought I could afford them. They were usually in the $17 range. We picked these up young in the $12 range and they're growing up nicely. And they uh, are staying together, which really makes for an interesting flow, especially when they come across the front of the tank, which let's see if they'll do that for us here. But the three of them really are very colorful. And uh, as soon as one comes across, the others will follow it, usually. Watch, they're not going to do it for me now, are they? Oh, he's going back to get them. <laughs> and there's the other red-tailed shark. And there's the pearl gourami that we're slowly replacing with those other three. He's one of the three that are left. And so... Now we have three young ones that eventually will grow up. But the Amazon sword has been moved to the back and trimmed very nicely. And as I said, we've got these now clown plecos, which are so small, uh, probably about an inch and a half each, and they tend to disappear with all this plant growth. But Pam is constantly watching closely and finding them, and uh, so I'll capture some in the video for you. Now we're back here in the office tank, and there's a story here for sure. You'll see for the first time really quite a bit of activity with the two clown loaches, which tend to be uh, hidden most of the time. But the fixture that they hide in, which had a small opening to it, uh, I, I can't believe how they even fit in it, but they did. 
And so when we did that big move recently because of the windows being installed, I mean, I thought they were trapped in there. I thought I was going to have to break it open. Uh, but we've since found another fixture that they could hide in, and that's the whitish or cream colored thing you see there in the center. And the entranceway is right in the front, and it's got plenty of room now. So I'm hoping that they can adopt that as their new home. But both in the bow tank that we just saw, the clown loaches, which didn't show up in any of the video today, are much more active and open now that the pleco is not in there anymore. And so we're very pleased with that. It's one thing having fish, another thing having fish that you can actually see. And so uh, while it's fun when something appears out of no place, like those small clown plecos, uh, Pam is constantly looking for them and finding them in different places. Uh, but you know, if you buy a fish that doesn't show up, what's the point, right? Uh, and so now these two clown loaches that you see running up and down the side of the tank here uh, have a new home. And they did not want to leave that other home. I don't know how one would get in there. I was surprised that one could get in there. And then the second one would squeeze in there also. And I had no idea there was only one entranceway. And so they had to come out the same way, and one would sometimes back out, believe it or not. And lo and behold, uh, when I wanted them to move to this fixture as their home, uh, they got in that other fixture. I could not get them out, no matter what I did. And I really got to the point of being scared, because each time I would pick that fixture up trying to dump them out, it would be a matter of them not coming out, and uh, thinking that the air pocket that was now in there because I had held it out of water, I had to fill it back up with water so that they would have some water to be in. And lo and behold, finally uh, today, uh, two days later, I had put that other fixture on top of this fixture and I was at a point of saying, I wonder if they're stuck in there or not. And lo and behold, they both came out. And as soon as they did, I immediately removed that one fixture, which is now in the corner tank. And uh, these two are going to have to find a new home. But what's nice about it is they tend to be more active and out right now. And I have seen them going into that new home uh, right down in the opening that you can see here. And it's a nice big opening, so I don't have the worries I did on the other one where I was concerned that they were so big and that opening was so small I couldn't imagine how they could get in and out. But they did. And so the black mollies are continuing to do very well here. As I said, I took the one female black molly who's very pregnant and young uh, and put her in that now called a breeding tank, if you will. And uh, I had a heck of a time catching, there's like three females in here, all very heavy. And every time I'd go after them, they totally outswam me. And I had enough plants and fixtures in here that they could get out of my reach. And so finally this morning, I was able to get one of those females out of here and see if it works out. Last time I did it, the water in the beta split tank, as I'm calling it, uh, was not that good, okay? It had been there a little too long. And so lo and behold, uh, that fish sort of just sat on the gravel, and I finally said, oh, I can't afford to lose her, so I moved her back in here. And so uh, this is a trial, see if I can have her drop her babies where they would be more protected. But maybe you can see in the back here the, the sail on that black molly, uh, that male black molly is just beautiful. There's two of them. And uh, when they get up next to a female and start showing off, that top fin just stands up so beautifully. And then this is mostly a guppy tank. I do have one left last pair of sword tails in here. And uh, it was two females and a male, and the one female is now in the breeding tank. There, maybe you'll see the, the finnage on that male uh, now that we're up close. There we go. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but they really do show off for the females. There he is. Look at that. Can you see that? And so, so much for this visit. I really appreciate you coming by. I love sharing this with you, and especially your comments that people are making down here, which we have a dialogue going. And it's from all over the world. So not only here just in the domestic United States, but uh, over in Scotland, uh, we have fans. And uh, 
Sometimes it's an email as opposed to a comment on the YouTube video. So with that, thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming by. And uh, we'll let you know how these new clown plecos are doing next time we talk. And like I said, they say they're slow growing and it'll be a while before they get out to their full size. But meanwhile, the clown loaches are just doing great in both tanks. Very colorful, very active, as opposed to just being hidden and not coming out. So things are improving in that side. Really would like to move one of these male black mollies out into one of the other tanks where there's some other black mollies, but uh, have not been successful in catch catching them yet. So, you take care. Hopefully you'll enjoy the springtime as it develops here.